Welcome to Great Basin's Astronomy Festival. We are pleased to introduce Dr. Brandon Lawton of the Space Telescope Science Institute. Dr. Lawton will be talking today about the new Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Hello, I'm Dr. Brandon Lawton from the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. I am pleased to present to you NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Roman is scheduled to launch in the mid 2020s and the Space Telescope Science Institute is the Science Operations Center for this wonderful mission. So who is Nancy Grace Roman? Well, Nancy Grace Roman was born in 1925 in Nashville, Tennessee. She received her PhD from the University of Chicago in 1949. As a woman in astronomy, she experienced many obstacles in getting a permanent position. She ultimately accepted a job at the new space agency, NASA, in 1959 just six months after NASA was formed. Dr. Roman was the first female executive at NASA and the first chief of astronomy. In her job, she worked diligently to plan for a robust suite of satellites and rockets to be managed by NASA. She also shepherded the Hubble Space Telescope through the political process in Congress. Without Dr. Roman, there very well may not have been a Hubble Space Telescope. When asked about her favorite discovery from Hubble, Dr. Roman enthusiastically replied, dark energy. Hubble's ongoing legacy continues to inspire. After more than 30 years, Hubble continues to provide groundbreaking data from the cosmos. This includes ongoing studies of the mysterious dark energy and exoplanets, which are planets around other stars. In fact, these two cosmic topics were the driving factor in the development of the Roman Space Telescope. So why Roman? Well, the future of astrophysics lies in accumulating large quantities of high quality data and in new technologies. Take a look at the image on the left. The little box next to the full moon is the area of the sky Hubble can observe at any given time. It is also called the field of view. It would take over 150 of these individual Hubble observations to cover the full moon. The reality is that many of astronomy's biggest mysteries can only be solved with lots of data. We need larger cameras on large space-based telescopes to collect that data. Likewise, many potential future space-based missions that may be built and launched in the 2030s and later decades have the aim of directly imaging Earth-like planets around other stars. This requires new technologies like state-of-the-art coronagraphs. The image at the right is a computer simulation of what our solar system might look like from a large 15 meter space telescope more than 12 parsecs away using a very advanced coronagraph. A coronagraph is a tool that blocks the light of the star so that you can directly observe planets around the star, much like you might use your hand to block the light from a car at night so that you can see the dark terrain around you. To get to such advanced coronagraphs in the next few decades, we need to test a next generation coronagraph now. Both of these advancements, large camera and a coronagraph are on the Roman Space Telescope. Here is a comparison of the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope with the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope. Each of these telescopes have unique capabilities that the others do not have. For example, Webb has a larger mirror and can observe light well into the infrared part of the spectrum, which is great for observing the faintest objects in the universe. Hubble observes many types of light, including ultraviolet light. Hubble provides a key window into the ultraviolet universe. Now draw your attention to the top of the slide, which shows the field of views of each telescope. Hubble and Webb provide detailed views of a small patch of sky at any given time. Roman will provide Hubble quality data with about 100 times the field of view. The odd shape you see for the Roman field of view is from its primary science camera called the wide field instrument. Now not shown here on this slide is the Roman's coronagraphic instrument. So Roman is what we call a survey telescope. So what will such a large eye on the sky do for us? Well, for starters, it will provide us with planets by the thousands. Take a look at the left. This is an artist's impression of an icy minor planet in our outer solar system. 
Roman, with its surveys of the cosmos, will catch thousands of minor planets in our solar system as they move throughout the night sky. Now take a look at the right. Looking outside of our solar system, Roman will search for planets around other stars using a novel technique called microlensing. By repeatedly staring at millions of stars in the direction of the center of our Milky Way galaxy, Roman will look for telltale cha changes in the apparent brightness of those stars that indicate the passing of an unseen interloping planet. The microlensing method can even find planets that are not orbiting a parent star, so-called rogue exoplanets. Roman's large field of view will provide large views of stars and star forming regions. We will get the full contextual view to better understand the environment around which stars form. Here is an example using the famous Hubble image of the pillars of creation. Now what you see on the screen right now is a ground based image of the dusty pillars where new stars are being born. As I play this video, you will see the famous Hubble image overlaid with pristine high quality data. As we pull back, you will notice that this region is much more expansive than was captured by Hubble. As we end the video, you will again see the unique shape of the Roman field of view, indicating how much of the region Roman could see in one pointing. Roman's large field of view will also provide surveys of the environments around galaxies and at the distribution of millions of galaxies in the universe. Here is a ground-based view of an interesting galaxy in the Abel 426 cluster of galaxies. In addition to the large active galaxy near the center of this image, nearly everything else in this image is a galaxy, each one comprising of billions of stars. As we play this video, you will see the Hubble version overlaid on the ground-based view. As we pull out, you will again see how much of the universe Roman can observe in one pointing. This expansive view will provide a more complete picture of how galaxies are distributed in the universe. With planned surveys by Roman, months of observing large swaths of the sky will allow astronomers to stitch together what we call the large-scale structure of the universe, or the 3D distribution of galaxies in the universe. Which brings us to some of the largest mysteries of the universe Roman will study. In 1998, Two teams of astronomers announced their discovery of the existence of a mysterious phenomena called dark energy. Essentially, the astronomers were studying how the universe was expanding with time, the expectation being that the expansion of the universe should be slowing, slowing down given the collective pool of gravity from all of the galaxies. The data they got was astounding. Now imagine you threw an apple in the air. You expect it to come down due to the gravity of the Earth. What if, instead, the apple accelerated away from you out into space? That is what the astronomers basically discovered, that the universe's rate of expansion is actually increasing with time. The mysterious cause of this acceleration of the expansion of the universe is termed dark energy. It turns out that if you add up the contributions of all matter and energy in the universe, dark energy comprises a whopping 68% of the entire universe. A mysterious invisible form of matter dubbed dark matter comprises about another 27%, and the remaining 5% of the universe is comprised of known matter, everything we are familiar with on Earth, the matter described in the periodic table of the elements. Roman's 3D mapping of galaxies in the universe and its observations of the expansion history of the universe will provide key details into the nature of both dark energy and dark matter. All of this data from the five years of Roman's primary mission will be made immediately available to anybody with internet access. So what else will we find in that data? Well, all of that data, again, will be made av immediately available via the Barbara A. Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes, otherwise known as MAST. Over 20 telescopes, including Hubble and soon James Webb, have their data stored on MAST. Roman will have around 20 petabytes of data after five years. The amount of data Roman collects in five years will dwarf the amount of data Hubble has accumulated in its first 30 years. Much like how the Roman Space Telescope is named after a prominent woman scientist, 
Mast is named after another woman luminary, Barbara A. Mikulski. She has the distinction of being the longest serving woman in the history of the United States Congress, and I cannot think of a better steward for the data that Roman will provide. As we end this presentation, I wanna thank you all for your time and enthusiasm. I will leave you with a visualization that takes the Hubble observations of the nearby Andromeda galaxy and uses that data to simulate what it might look like with the Roman Space Telescope. The square grid you see are the 18 detectors that make up the full camera from Roman. The areas near the top are where we have no data from Hubble. Now you will see the original Hubble data overlaid as we pull out. Here is the original data from Hubble that includes over 400 pointings of Hubble overlaid on that. And there are the 400 pointings it took to make that image. Overlaid on that, you see the two pointings from Roman. Roman could cover that in two pointings. Now here's the simulated data. Each of these points of light are individual stars. We hope that you, we, you are as excited about the future of space science as we are. Thank you very much.